What's AMD up to on Linux with this launch? Well, this is the RX 9070 XT. This is the Sapphire Pulse. And this is the 7090 XT that I've been testing on Linux. Now, uh, day one launch, a eh, little, little bit rocky. You'll need to download a couple files and do some things, but this is RDNA 4. It's RDNA 4 on Linux, and it almost works perfectly out of the box on Ubuntu 24.04 uh, LTS and 24.10. But you need to be running a newer kernel, and you need some firmware files. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a look at the card. All right, so this is a three slot card that has two eight pin power. It has dual HDMI and dual DisplayPort. Historically, AMD has been the most well-supported choice on Linux, but NVIDIA is uh, noticing. And so the newer versions of NVIDIA drivers also have a, have a GPL option, which again, sort of plays the same binary blob, open source driver, um, square dance game. But the way that that is architecturally is slightly easy, slightly easier to support with more forward compatibility. That's a conversation for a different video. This that we're talking about here is RDNA 4 on Linux. I just want to play some games and run some super accelerated pixels. So the board power on the 9070 XT is 304 watts. Now I also tested this card in Linux and also did overclocking. And this card overclocks better than any 9070 XT that I have. You can get significantly more performance out of this one. It's even even more disturbingly more performance than the other 9070 XT that I tested, and I'm not sure why. Good job, Sapphire. It's a it's a true three slot design. It's got three big <laughs> fans, and they move a lot of air, a lot of air. I wish this was a dual BIOS card. It is not a dual BIOS card. It is DisplayPort 2.1, however. Uh, Sapphire recommends a 750 watt power supply if you're going to do overclocking or anything like that. Maybe 850 watts would, would be more your speed. DisplayPort 2.1, high refresh, whatever, it's really good. Let's go to the lab and have some fun. All right, AMD really has done it. I mean, day zero support with Linux. Everything is basically there. Uh, the mini game for setting it up on Linux is also still there. Three important ingredients. Step one is you need kernel 6.13.5 for reasons. You need firmware that was just pushed up to Linux firmware about three days ago, and you need Mesa 25. And that combination of things will get you to where you need to be. It was actually really easy to do that on Arch, but for some reason, on Ubuntu 24.10, um, it was a little tricky to get the correct firmware, firmware files to load. Uh, there's a PPA for getting Mesa 25, and there's a PPA for mainline for your kernel. So use mainline to get your kernel. There's a full write-up of that on the forum. But if you don't do that, the performance isn't there, or worse, things will just crash randomly. You should be getting about 290 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is uh, pretty impressive. That's at 1080p at the highest preset. Our test bench is based around a 9800X3D with CL28 memory, 32 gigs in all. Probably you'll be running 48 or 64 gigs because, you know, I know how my Linux peeps roll. But uh, you're basically looking at 7900XTX level performance at significantly reduced power and um, some really nice new RDNA 4 features to boot, which the rest of the software will hopefully catch up to. Of course, you know, Valve and Steam and Proton pulling out the big wins here. The Mesa team probably pulling a lot of all-niners over the last couple of weeks. Usually, it's not this down to the wire, or I might have messed something up, but uh, I've only had this working since the firmware came. And usually, there's a little bit of backward compatibility. But this generation, the backward compatibility was not quite there. You really do need Mesa 25, the latest kernel, and everything else before you get into gaming on RDNA 4 on Linux. But once you do that, 7900 XTX performance, basically, for quite a bit less money. Sapphire has really done some amazing stuff here in terms of overclocking, and there are some options for Linux, but that is maybe a video for a different day. I ended up doing most of the overclocking testing on Windows, and with the overclocking testing on Windows, this card can clear three gigahertz for a boost clock, which is really darned impressive. Actually, I did see, you know, with the overclock and the other XT cards that I've tested, I have seen over three gigahertz on those. 
so far. But on this card, it sustains it. Maybe it's, I think it uses the PTM 7950. If that's not correct, I'll, I'll post a comment below. But, uh, you know, Linus sells that on uh, LTT store, and uh, it's, uh, it's a really interesting thermal paste that ages well and uh, performs really well. And so it's nice to see that immediately incorporated into manufacturing and uh, is more awesome. And there's not really like liquid metal. It's like, oh, yeah, liquid metal. Liquid metal has some downsides. This is. There's not really a lot of downsides with the PTM 7950. So it's really nice to see it actually in a product. So good job, Sapphire, if that's true. Otherwise, I've already spent way too much time talking about that. But the performance, yes, performance. Linux, first class citizen, good job. So I'm still chasing a couple of ghosts here. I wouldn't exactly call this the smoothest Linux launch for AMD, but you know, give it a week or two. I don't think that AMD is gonna have stock problems with these GPUs, so don't you know have FOMO or miss out or anything like that. But stay tuned on the level one forums as we sort of poke at this. Like I say, I had a better experience on Arch, which is how I could actually do some of the testing. Uh, just to round things out, I also did do some Windows testing on the Sapphire GPU just to see how it stacked up. And uh, it's a really, it's a pretty strong card. There's nothing wrong with the card itself, Linux support. It is dual HDMI, dual DVI, and sometimes those HDMI ports can be a little problematic on Linux. The HDMI consortium doesn't want to permit AMD to have a binary blob for HDMI. This is a real problem. We as customers should apply pressure to make that problem go away because it is uh, only caused by sociopathic people in the HDMI consortium that uh, don't believe that Linux should have a first-class HDMI experience because all Linux users are, are filthy pirates. At least that's the only thing that I could conclude and that is not a reasonable position for them to be in. So if there's some other legitimate technical reason, I would, I would love to know what it is, but uh, that's the best I can come up with. Now NVIDIA is moving kind of in a GPL direction as well. That is an option when you install the NVIDIA drivers is you can install the, the GPL version of the driver, which mechanically is very similar to the way that that AMD does it. NVIDIA is still getting their their ducks in a row with that approach. But notice the 1% lows here. Uh, the 5070 and the 5070, like the 5000 series GPUs are lagging behind in NVIDIA. And this was repeatable across distros. Um, I couldn't get my other Arch distro set up for a good demonstration, but this was definitely happening there as well. This will probably be fixed with a driver update, but still for launch drivers, good job AMD. So there you go. The other elephant in the room is GPU pricing, it's gotten really weird. 5,000 series, like you want the latest generation GPU. If you're a Linux user, you're often relegated to not the latest generation GPU. So a six or 7,000 series GPU on fire sale is gonna work great. If you're willing to get your hands just a tiny little bit dirty, come to the level one forums. I'll walk you through the installation and setup of this in the how-to, which is the link for that is coming in a day or two on this video. Uh, to get this set up and up and running and uh, full performance and, and all that kind of stuff. Steam has come a long way and that's great. I really wish that there was more feature parity in terms of like the adrenaline driver suite on Linux, but there's not enough of us there yet. Uh, Gabe Newell and what he's doing with the Steam Deck and now supporting Steam OS on things that are not the Steam Deck. All of this is going to propel the Linux ecosystem forward. That is very nice to see. And AMD historically and traditionally has been a good steward of the Linux community. And this card is not much of a departure from that. This card is not supported on Rockham, at least not for day one. So if you're interested in using it, 16 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, which is, you know, 256 bit, it's, it's pretty speedy. Uh, there's, no, there's no day one Rockham support. But still, you'd be hard pressed to go wrong choosing AMD for your, you know, gaming workstation, your workstation that games or your enthusiast gaming machine or whatever. If you're, if you're building a purely gaming machine, uh, you know, Windows is still used for pure, pure gaming. If you're thinking about using this for a virtual machine, um, I did not have a lot of success doing the VFIO pass-through setup with that on modern setups. Uh, the reset bug still seems like it's a thing but it's really too early for me to call it. It's gonna take me at least a few more days of experimenting. And so if you're into the VFIO thing, join me on the level one forum. It's hard to do those kinds of experiments even on AM5 anymore just because of the way that the uh, VFIO groups break down. So I'm doing these kinds of experiments on Threadripper where Threadripper has a lot more PCIe lanes and a lot more experimental support. So if you run a virtual machine, it's promising we know some of the older GPUs are broken. This seems like it's broken in a different way right now, but is maybe salvageable. 
We'll see. We'll see. It might actually be fine. It might just be the bleeding edge AM like there's older versions of AMD GPU, the kernel module that are like, I know how to deal with this card that in fact do not. So don't read too much into what I'm saying. You're just gonna have to wait uh, on the forum, but know that I have uh, spent uh, a fair bit of time before this review trying and suffering uh, for your fun VFIO builds. So yeah, I'm one of this is level one Linux. You can find me in the level one forums and uh, yeah, hello, how's it going? All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you there.